Hello sis and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Nia. Happy New Year, by the way. We're starting things off a little differently this year. I know if you've been here for a while, you're so used to my vlogs, you're used to family, you're used to the DIYs, but I really wanna bring some more depth to my content. I talked about this in my last vlog. I want there to be something that you can take from my videos, not just so much of just watching me and how I go about my life. I'm still gonna be doing those, but I wanna bring in more conversation. I wanna bring in more uplifting things. I feel like I've been through so much in my life if you were anything like me in my adulthood, I had no direction. I couldn't connect with anybody because I just didn't know if people were going through the things that I went through. Starting off with a Q&A, I had people ask me questions about anything. You could have asked me anything. So we'll be talking about motherhood, content creating, my thoughts on today's dating era, how to actually achieve soft life energy, all that good stuff. That'll be in today's Q&A along with just some getting ready with me, playing with some makeup, doing my hair child, that's it. So if you're into that type of stuff, I highly encourage that you watch this video there's a lot of good gems in here make sure you guys like the video hit the subscribe button and i'm so excited to continue building my community so let's get into the video all right y'all so let's get right into these questions thank you for those who did ask questions i also fish for some questions that y'all be asking me in my youtube shorts as well as some things on tiktok but the first question is what made us settle in the dmv area if you don't know the dmv area it is um dc maryland virginia we live in northern virginia right now honestly this is not where we're settling <laughs> to be completely honest we moved up here because people were like oh you know black excellence which there is there's a lot of black excellence out here um diversity all that good stuff right we moved up here after my husband got all the air force we're just like yeah like this is where we want to be luxury all of that whatever so we moved here and it was all fine and dandy like the first year but then we bought this home and we started to realize like where the where the black people at <laughs> you know what i'm saying i'm like and the black people they got stuff to lose like where where the black excellence at the black excellence is here it's just out in an area we don't want to be in. It's almost like where we used to live, which was in Hampton, Virginia. And it's like, you know, one area is really nice and then you hit the corner and it's kind of just like not nice no more. And that's not anything I wanted to be around when we moved up this way. I feel like people don't talk about this part of the DMV area, which is nothing wrong with it. It's just like, this is not our ethnic group. When you're raising a kid, at least for me, it's really important that Zara grows up around people that look like her, right? Like it's so important for Zara to grow up around that that is nowhere near here so once i figured that out i said oh yeah this is not where we're supposed to be i've never wanted zara to be the only black kid in her class that's not anything i've ever wanted for her i want her to be around diversity this is not where we're settling i've talked about this on our um on a tiktok live actually last week we're not settling in the dmv it's cute it's nice it's luxury but um it's not for us and that's just that's just that my perspective on the dating era i'm so glad i married <laughs> i could not deal with what y'all going through i feel like don't nobody want to try for nothing anymore and i also talked about this on my tiktok live i talked about this in our podcast as well i feel like people are just kind of like Ugh. they just don't have the effort no more they don't have the they don't want to put in the work anymore. Like everyone just wants it to be perfect up front. Like there's no room for error. And I'm like, Lord have mercy. And I said this on my podcast, like imagine, cause my husband was not my manifestation man. Like he was not anywhere near my dream sheet or of a man, if you will. So imagine if after the first few times me and my husband hung out, I was just kind of like, eh. nah, I'm cool. Instead of like, hey, let me voice how I feel about this. And then my husband taking it in and being like, okay, well maybe I should do this and she's uncomfortable with it or she doesn't like this, blah, blah, blah. And imagine if we didn't have those conversations and didn't come together and didn't work through them, you know, and vice versa, we wouldn't be together. And that makes me so sad. Like to not be with my husband, had we not just had those conversations, like grown adults, I feel like people just completely just miss the point with that nobody wants to put in the work anymore and i feel like that's the issue when it comes to dating nowadays like there's there's no energy or effort and i feel like you have to have the foundation like you have to build that foundation with your significant other and that's the best part of having a relationship is building and growing together me and my husband reminisce on this stuff all the time like oh remember when we this remember this remember that that's the best part of these relationships and i feel like people just don't care for that anymore so yeah i could never be single in this day and age and i always say it if me and my husband were to not work out 
Um, I ain't dating nobody. Sorry, it ain't happening. All right, somebody asked me, how did I approach dating? Um, I never really dated. I kind of just made people my boyfriend. <laughs> Except for my husband. My husband was the only person I did not care to like make my boyfriend, which is so weird. Um, he was very adamant about it and I was just like, mm, I don't really like the the commitment tying to that, which is also weird because then we just went straight to be married. It's just like, it was the most non-traditional situation, but hey, it worked out. So I never really like approached dating. I never like approached men or anything. If we happened to click, we clicked. And then you were just my boyfriend after that. <laughs> and that's just, that's just how that went, honestly. Somebody asked me about the highs and lows of motherhood. Now, anytime I get to talking about motherhood, I get super, super emotional. And we're not about to do that because that's not, that's not the vibe. So we are not going to cry. But however, the highs of motherhood. Zara, Zara is the high. Like anything Zara related, she is the high of motherhood. It's almost like if God was like, hey, let me show you a piece of who I am. And then boom, gave me Zara. That is the high of motherhood. A piece of God is literally who Zara is just in human form and it's so crazy and that's how I know I will never question God's love for me because he blessed me with Zara. Um, Zara literally saved my life and for that I owe her everything. If you don't know, I was a very, 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 very depressed individual for like eight, nine years um, throughout adulthood and Zara literally saved me from that. I mean, saved me from that. So I owe her everything. All right, so. <laughs> We didn't cry, we're not messing up the makeup. I'm so proud of myself. And now to get into the lows of motherhood. I feel like the lows for me in motherhood is just like the days where I kind of reflect and I'm like, damn, like I could have did this better or I could have had more patience with her or I could have, you know, had more understanding because she's little. Um, I remember when we were in Texas, actually, Zara does this thing, it, it, like it never fails. Zara does this thing where whenever we go out to eat, or if it's dinner time, she always drops her fork. No matter what, like she still does it to this day. She always drops her fork. I don't know what the heck this girl be doing to um, drop her fork, but she always does. And it's like the most stressful thing. So I'm like, girl, how do you, how do you do this every single time, right? So I remember we were out in Texas, we were eating lunch after church and Zara did it. She dropped her damn fork. And I just remember going, Zara, like, why do you always drop your fork? Like having a moment with her, right? And then later on, um, my stepmom was like, you know, Nia, you're such a great mom, you know, this, this, and that. And she was like, but, you know, um, the whole thing with like the, the fork, like that, you know, that didn't have to happen. Like she's a kid and, you know, things like that are gonna happen. And, you know, it's just stuff like that, that you, you know, you try to prevent acting how you were treated growing up that sometimes you know that part of you kind of just slips out subconsciously you know it'd be things like that that kind of like make me sad because i'm like dang you know i could have just you know kept it together or just found a little bit more grace for her but sometimes you know in motherhood you just get so tired of just like everything and then the littlest thing like a fork dropping it really sends you down to a rabbit hole and you know it'd be stuff like that it's kind of like the lows of motherhood like damn like i don't want the way that i reacted to that to affect Zara and how she does other things those are really the lows for me when it comes to motherhood just reflecting and thinking about how i could have approached a situation differently with Zara and make her feel like you know Zara like it's okay to make mistakes and stuff like that and to not have to be like this perfect kid all the time so those would probably be like the low for me okay someone asked me how did I find my style so if you don't already know my style is very like chic tomboy um very much like lounge but cute I can still get cute now I can dress up I can definitely dress up but I'm definitely more of like chic um like chic tomboy, like that's just my style. And um, I always knew that that was my style. I grew up very tomboyish. I had a lot of guy friends. I did, I played a lot of sports. Um, I had a, my brother, my little brother, we and him, me and him were always together. Like it was just my life, just the tomboy life. Even my best friend growing up, she was a tomboy too. So I always knew my style was gonna be like tomboyish and all that. It wasn't until I got to like, 
I would say in the Navy really is when I really started to explore my feminine side and I really fell in love with it. And then I found it even more being married with my husband. And I found it in the Navy because I spent a lot of time by myself and it gave me time to explore who I am, things that I love, being able to just be more feminine and be more in touch with just like my girly side. And then when I met my husband, you know, when you, when you meet the right man, they are going to allow you to just be feminine. You don't have to put on this hard exterior. You, you just don't have to try. It just comes out naturally. You know, the little girly things like, oh, can you help me do this, 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 and that? It just comes out naturally because they allow you to do that. So when I met my husband, that's when I was really able to explore that girly side, which led into me wanting to, wanting to, you know, add some color to my style, add some flair, try out, try out new clothes that I normally wouldn't buy, get away from the athleisure section, which I am still in, very much an athleisure girly, and just try more feminine things, put on some heels, you know what I'm saying, instead of always wearing sneakers, and let my hair down, try out new hairstyles, play with more makeup you know put on some lashes like it wasn't until i met my husband when i really really started to get into that and so that's how i found out that my style is like tomboy chic um i'll put on some cargo pants some nice cargo pants but i'll dress it up with a real nice top and some heels like i can get very very girly so it just depends on how i feel that day but yeah that's how i found my style okay the next one is one that i actually always get on a lot of my content which is how I started earning money on TikTok and when I knew it was enough to just make it my job. I started TikTok, um, I actually started posting to TikTok for fun in 2022. That's when it was just like really, really fun. Um, I was just posting myself and then I started posting my family and then we started growing pretty rapidly after I started posting my family. It wasn't until earlier this year when I actually started to make real money off of it and real money i mean like 8k a video stuff like that like that's when i started to really make some money off of it but during that time i still had my job my corporate job i was with um the federal government uh, i was a gs12 and i was making pretty good money with them but it, it, it was getting to a point where it was like, it wasn't making me satisfied. It wasn't bringing me any joy. It was very, very stressful. That stress kind of filtered into my family. So I'd be stressed out, I'd be lashing out on them. And it was just like, it was bad. And it was getting to a point where I was like, I literally just cannot do this anymore. And I actually quit my job before I was considered a full-time content creator. I would consider it full-time when I started getting paid from it. So after I quit, I was still posting videos, whatever, just doing my thing. Um, my job was not my only source of income. I do have multiple sources of income. So I was still able to like quit my job and still be okay. Not great, but I was okay. You know, a little deal would come in here now and then, you know, I was my first big deal was with Amazon actually. And um, I'm still partnered with them till this day. So yeah, that was my first big deal and i got them i got booked with them outside of my agency they actually found me and wanted to work with me directly which i thought was just so crazy i was like who the hell am i so um yeah it wasn't until like a few months after i had quit i had agency clickish which is the agency that i am um currently being managed by they reached out to me and I thought it was a fluke child. I was like, ain't no freaking way. Cause I had just talked to my husband that same week about like, babe, I think it's time for me to get an agency. I think it's time for me to have somebody help me out. Like it's so much work. It's more than just creating a video and posting it. Like there's planning, there's admin stuff, there's negotiations for these contracts, learning how to read a contract so you're not getting played and you're doing everything right and you ain't gonna go to jail. You know, there's just all this stuff. And I was just like, you know, it's time for me to get an agency, but not just any agency. I need an agency that represents black people. Like I need to know if I'm going to an agency, they have my best interests at heart. Okay, like if they're, people over here getting these types of types of deals then i need to be getting those types of deals too especially if i have the following for it so that was like my biggest criteria and then literally that same week 
um, somebody from my agency reached out to me and I was just like, this can't be real. Like who the hell is playing with me? I was trying to look them up and they hadn't launched yet. So it was kind of hard to find some information. Um, I could, I didn't know who was part of the agency, nothing, but I had a meeting with them and that meeting told me everything I needed to know. And from then on, that's when I became a quote unquote full-time content creator, but I never based making content creating my full-time job. I never based it off of the money. I based it off of how I felt about it. Content creating brought me so much joy. It was, it's something that just comes so naturally. You know, when you say like you love um, doing hair and when you think about like creating wigs or styling people's hair, you have a customer and it's like, dang, I already know what would look good on you, what colors would look good, how to style your face shape, all that and you just like it just naturally comes it's like a it's like second nature like you don't have to think about it that's how i feel with content creating i don't have to think about it it doesn't make me you know don't get me wrong content creating can be very stressful but it's not something that is hard for me to think about you know what i'm saying like it's real easy for me to just sit there and be like okay this 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 is how it's gonna happen this is how i'm gonna film it the lighting the scenes where i'm gonna cut all of that it comes so naturally so that's what i base it off of, of how it made me feel and how passionate i was about it and i've always had this dream of like following my passion just going full throttle for it i've always wanted to do um, some type of something in social media. I've always loved YouTube. I've loved these face-to-face -face videos. I grew up with YouTube before YouTube was even really YouTube and people were using it for that. Um, I just never had the confidence to post anything because that's just how my household was. It wasn't a, a place of like, hey, you know, you can do anything you want in this life. That ain't how I grew up, child. Mm -mm. It wasn't until I met my husband where he continuously helped me see the parts he helped me see me the way that he sees me and i think that's so powerful in a partner so 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 powerful in a partner for someone to help you see themselves the way they see you like someone who truly loves you and for them to be able to help you see yourself through their eyes that just helped me on my confidence journey it helped me love myself and it really helped me get out of my comfort zone and just start posting the content and just being okay with just putting myself out there. And my husband really helped make that happen. So content and making it full time off of the dollars because the dollars fluctuate. A lot of people make it seem like, you know, you're just constantly, constantly, constantly getting paid, child. No, you can have months of, you ain't getting no paychecks and then you can have a month of, here comes 50K, you know what I'm saying? But if you ever, if there's anything I learned in life, it's to not chase after money if you're doing things only for the dollar you'll never 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 ever ever be happy you won't because if you're tying what you're doing to just money you'll never be fulfilled money is a very temporary quick gratification type of thing it's not something that is going to make you feel whole it'll make you feel good in the moment but that's so short-lived so if you're if there's anything you want to do please check with yourself and make sure that it's something you're doing strictly because you are passionate about it. And I feel like if people leaned into that more, so many more people, I say this on the podcast, so many more people would be living in their purpose. So many more people, if we just tapped into things we truly, truly enjoy, truly in love, truly bring us happiness. If we tapped into that more, so many more people would be living in their purpose so yeah that's the the long version of that sorry we got a little uh carried away there but i'm just very passionate about content creating and that's why for this year my big thing was to add more depth to my channel because it's there's so much more to content creating than vlogs vlogs are fun you know you get to see us you get to uh, people watch and see how people just go about their daily lives which is cool and all but it's like what depth do you have on your channel? Like, what can you help people do? What, what, how can you help someone grow? How can you show someone how to do something? What are some stories you have that people can relate to? Like, that's, that's the new lane that I wanna go to. I've always wanted to be in that lane, but I got sucked into a niche, which is okay. I love my family niche, but there's just so much more to offer than just family content. Uh, somebody asked, how's my health journey going? It is going great. 
as of today, I am in week four of my booty program with the Booty King. Um, it, it sounds funny because it's like, it's not just to grow a booty, it's actually legit full body. And my full body been changing, child. My diet's been great. I'm not on like no strict freaking diet where I can't have any sweets ever. I still indulge in like a healthy sweet here and there. So I have like sweet alternatives, but it's, it's nothing of me like depriving myself. Like you have to reward yourself along the way. And I feel like that is what made it easier for me to stay on this diet that I've created for myself. So that's going well. I love that for me. Um, the workouts are great. Every four weeks, it's a different plan. So after this week, I'm excited to see what's um, for weeks eight through 12. That'll be exciting. But yeah, I'm doing, I'm doing so well. It's reflecting all over my body, everywhere, everywhere. My face is always first, but my butt, my legs, my back, my arms, I'm just like, I'm loving how I look. So yeah, it's going great. Uh, purchases that I regret and also my fave purchases. So I don't have too many purchases that I regret because when I buy something, I really want it. And that's just that. Purchases I could think about that I regret are um, like house related things, like things um, that you buy just to fill a space, just to be like, okay, this space is filled. And then a month or two later, you're like, wow, I actually really hate this. Those are the type of purchases I stopped doing once I got to this house. Y'all know if you watched my home update vlogs, um, it took me a year to find some nightstands for our primary bedroom. A full freaking year, we didn't have nightstands. And I did not care. I was like, we will keep putting things in this closet until I find nightstands that are literally screaming to me by me. And that's what I did. And I feel like a lot of people need to practice delayed gratification. I feel like social media has really made everything like if you don't have it instantly, then you don't got it at all. If you don't have it now, then you're missing out and you'll never get it. I feel like we need to step away from the instant gratification that social media has brainwashed us with and really tap into delayed gratification. The feeling of like waiting on something that you actually really, really want that you're not just getting to just be like, okay, hey, I got it. Like if you're actually waiting to get those things and then you get it, it brings so much more joy than anything ever could with it being like an instant thing. And that's something that took me a very long time to learn. You know, I was very much like instant gratification, instant gratification. I need it, I need it, I need it, I need it. Like that, that used to be me. And I practiced that for a long time being in this house a whole freaking year. I've been practicing that. And it's just like, if it's for me, it'll still be there. If not, something better is on the way. And I feel like if more people just tapped into delayed gratification, you'd be so much more happy with things. You wouldn't waste your money constantly. You know, it's not like, oh dang, if I just waited a month or two, I could have just had this instead. We're not doing that no more. We're waiting. We're being better with our money. Delayed gratification, delayed gratification, okay? Delayed gratification. Some of my fave purchases, um, all my homes, even the one that we had in the ghetto, <laughs> because every single home is a lesson learned. Every single home is a is like a catapult forward. Every single home we've learned a lesson. Every home has showed us more of what we deserve. So yeah, all my homes have been my favorite purchases as well as my car. I love my car, love, love, love my car. I don't care what y'all say about Range Rovers. Child, I love my Range Rover, okay? Love my Range Rover. Is it my dream, dream, dream car? It was at one point, but I have another dream vehicle in mind. So yeah, I'm excited for whenever that time comes. Um, the biggest lessons I learned in my 20s as a young mom. Am I a young mom? I had Zara at 24 going on 25. Does that is that a young mom? What is that like? Is that a young mom? I feel like maybe it is. Like if you look at it like the American way, like oh, you shouldn't be having a kid until like 30 and blah blah blah. Child, I ain't do nothing the American way. I ain't do nothing traditional. Everything about my life is sporadic. Everything about my life is just like if it felt good, child, go for it. That's how it is, basically. Lessons I learned as a young mom is to, is to stop allowing how other people feel about a situation influence the direction I'm gonna go as a mom. Um, and I say that because we had a lot of people in our business early on in our marriage, early when Zara was just first born, a lot of people in our business, you know, saying, oh, well, we didn't do this in our day, or this is how you should do this and blah, blah, blah. And it would really, 
you know, steer me away from doing the things that I wanted to do with my daughter. And I look back and I'm like, damn, if I just did what I wanted to do, we'd have so many more memories, regardless of how people feel about a situation. She's only this age, she shouldn't be doing this. And it's like, for you, that's how it was for you. This is not how we do it here. Like this is mommy and Zara, Nia and Zara. And I feel like if I just let all of those voices in my head go, at a younger age, I feel like there's so much more I could have done for Zara. I mean, I've done a lot, don't get me wrong. I have done a lot for baby girl and I'm so proud of myself, but it's just so much more. It's always gonna be so much more you feel that like you can do as a parent or you feel like you could have done at any age. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, that would, that would be my thing was to just stop letting other people's situations and how they feel influence the way that I wanted to be a mom, especially at a young age. Um, 24 is young. So, you know, you can easily be manipulated and easily be persuaded a different way because you're so young, you know, you don't know anything, you haven't experienced life. And when you have no experience with anything, you kind of lean into what the next person is saying. If it sounds better than your answer, it's easy to lean into what they're saying. And um, that's not something I do anymore. I don't do that, okay? I don't do it. So <laughs> yeah, that's, I guess that's like the biggest lesson I learned as a young mom in my 20s. Where is my mascara? All right, advice on finance and budgeting. So, me and my husband have gone through this multiple times where we get out of debt and then we put ourselves back in debt then we finally are debt free and all that good stuff, right? I would say, um, do not live beyond your means. And we used to do that all the time. It's like, it was an instant gratification thing, you know, especially, and it's even worse now with social media to like want to live above your means because you see everybody else doing this and it's like well i don't want to feel left out or i don't want to feel like like i can't indulge in this so you do it anyway you know irresponsibly and my big thing is like if i can't buy it twice or even three times i'm not doing it and i've heard a lot of people a lot of other people live by this too but it's like if you can't buy it so many times don't get it you don't need it and that's just what it is um yeah, and just self-control. Think about why you why you need whatever it is you need and does this really add value to what you have now or what you what you could have in the future? Especially when you have kids, you really got to start thinking about having extra money for whatever situation may occur, whatever life throws at you. It's not always about like showing out and trying to keep up with the Joneses. Sometimes you just need to just keep up with yourself and be realistic which are finances and that's okay. We all have to go through it. But yeah, my I think it would just be, um, I'm a financial expert, okay? Like, <laughs> but definitely if you can't buy it two or three times, don't get it at all and just be fucking for real with yourself, I guess, yeah. How to achieve soft life energy. So I actually made a short little TikTok on my personal TikTok. You know, we have my family TikTok and then we have my personal TikTok, just all about me. If that's something you're into, I have one. Um, and I talked about this actually, and I feel like a lot of people or the internet in general has the soft life and what that truly means, very fabricated. I feel like people are leaning more towards like it being about, you know, having money, being able to do whatever you want, whenever you want to, being able to go and do all the beauty maintenance and blah, blah, blah. Like, oh, that's the soft life. But that's far from it. The soft life, and I say this in my video, so it's gonna sound redundant if you've seen that, but the soft life is when you have, and it's something I've, I've learned too, the soft life is when you get done with your work early, you, you say content creating me. If I had my morning planned out and I finish a couple hours early, instead of me constantly trying to find more work for myself, I am taking a moment to myself to sit in silence, to eat a meal, which is not very often when I have my packed content creating days, um, sit outside and just kind of like stare at the woods that we have in the back here, go on a nice walk with my dog, um, buy myself flowers, create a flower bouquet, like that is partaking in soft life. It's um, getting the help and accepting the help when you need it and not trying to do everything yourself because you're just so structured to do that because you grew up with um, a single mom who you saw her doing everything, which is what I did. I saw my mom doing everything. So I feel like in my life, I still, even with my husband, I still have to do everything myself. No, allow that help to come in because we are human. The soft life is 
tapping into those little moments that bring you joy, which is why we're practicing the joy challenge, putting on your favorite perfume, sitting in the sun and drinking your coffee in the morning, um, not rushing your morning, taking a slow morning, taking your time doing your skin routine that morning, um, curling your hair, even if you're not going anywhere, who cares? Get pretty, put on some makeup. After this, I'm going to Wegmans, child. I ain't going nowhere fancy. That is partaking in the soft life. Everyone can have the soft life. It's just a matter if you are willing to take the time, give yourself that time to be soft, to not have that hard exterior, to not always feel like you have to do everything, to not always feel like you gotta get everything on your to-do list done. Do what you can and then save the rest for the next day if possible. Do all the important things early and then save the last few days of your week for you, moments for you. That is the soft life. And I feel like everybody has that just like so backwards because social media has made it that way that soft life is only something influencers can have. And you know, you're only able to have the soft life if you have babysitters and if you have a nanny and if you're an influencer, if you're pretty, like that's not the soft life. The soft life is attainable by everyone. It's an internal thing and you make the soft life happen for you and the things that bring you joy, not the things that you see on social media bringing everybody else joy. That is not the soft life. The soft life is what makes you soft, what makes you feel good. That is partaking in the soft life. So yeah, that's how you achieve soft life energy. You don't have to be rich to have soft life energy. It's just, it's not a real thing. <laughs> is this the, don't be chai. Okay, what color is this? I have like a natural lip liner, so I never have to um, actually put on full lip liner. It's something I used to hate about my lips. I used to hate that my lips were two-toned. Like I never understood it, but actually my TikTok family helped me to see the better parts of my two-tone lips like they're like oh my gosh you have a natural lip liner i wish i had that i could just wake up and go and i was like wow i never thought of it like that i always thought of it like dang girl why your lips two colors <laughs> never thought of it like that so to my tiktok community i am so grateful that y'all helped eliminate another insecurity that i had so yeah i never have to put too much liner on i hella i hella just messed that up Last question, how to find motivation to go to the gym? It's not even motivation to like work out or whatever. How to find motivation to go? I always say the hardest part of working out is getting to it, always. Even for me sometimes, you know, sometimes I'm just like, damn, like I don't really wanna do this. I have to get all the way to the gym. The gym for me is like a, uh, depending on which way I go, could be a 15 minute drive or it could be 20 minute drive depending on traffic and all that stuff so the way you find motivation to even just get going one i practice a thing where if i think it i'm doing it i don't care if i'm thinking about going to the gym you gotta like run off of that energy you have to if you're able to right if you're able to another way is uh from confidence and this is a video I was gonna post, but the files got corrupted and I'm really sad about that because it was a really good video. And I feel like videos like that, you can't record twice because there was just some gems in there. There was some gems in there that I was speaking on heavy. And it's like, I can't, I can't fake that and do it again. It's just not happening. But confidence to go to the gym or you get motivation to go to the gym through confidence. And that sounds crazy because it's like, okay, well, how the hell does that tie into motivation to the gym? When you, okay. Confidence is simply keeping the promises that you make to yourself, right? And say, uh, I'm gonna cook dinner tomorrow, right? I have art, I have it set in my mind, I'm not buying out. I don't wanna keep spending money every night. I'm gonna be cooking dinner tomorrow. So when you do, when you say that to yourself, you do it, right? Simple little tasks like that. And a way you can help yourself is already having planned what you're gonna make for tomorrow. Already having the groceries ordered or you already picked them up. Already having the pots set up so that, you know, it's like you see this, it's like, okay, I'm cooking, like I know what I'm doing today, right? So you achieve that little task. Then there's a next task for the next day. Tomorrow, I'm gonna at least move my body for 30 minutes, whether that's yoga, stretching, walking outside, going to the gym, walking on the treadmill, whatever it is. And you keep that promise to yourself. When you constantly make little tiny promises like that, even though they seem small, in your mind, you are literally reprogramming your subconscious to be like, okay, well, if I can keep completing all of these small tasks here and there, 
that leads into the next thing. So it's like all of a sudden you have this energy towards the next task without even thinking about it. it. It comes like second nature. You don't have to think about it. It's like, dang, if this is what I want to do, I know I'm going to do it because I have the confidence in all the other things I just did that this next big thing is really not even a big thing to me, you know? So um, when you do that and you constantly set these tiny little goals for yourself, why is my nose dripping? So when you do that and you constantly set these little goals for yourself throughout your day and you achieve them, you're building confidence. And when you build confidence, you're building consistency and you're building, uh, you're building a routine. And when you're in like a consistent routine and you're confident about it, it's so easy to add in the next challenge for yourself. Because even though it's a challenge, you subconsciously have already built this mindset of, okay, whatever I place for myself, I can do it. So if you think about going to the gym, it's like, well, I can do that. I, I made dinner. I walked. I moved my body. I woke up uh, 30 minutes early. Like I can do the next thing. So that's all it is. It's motivation is paired with confidence and you get confidence through consistency you get confidence through being on a consistent schedule and keeping those promises that you make to yourself that's why it's so important when you tell yourself you're going to do something to do it because even though it may seem like oh i can just do this the next day or i can just you know push this off to the side or i don't have to wake up 30 minutes because i'm tired like those little voices in your head that pop up when you're like, oh, I'm gonna wake up 30 minutes extra today and it gets to that time and then that little voice is like, well, you're tired, you should just sleep more. Like, what's 30 more minutes? That little voice is your comfort zone speaking to you and it's bringing you back to a place that is gonna keep you comfortable. And what happens when you're in a place where you're comfortable? You don't progress. Everyone who's ever progressed stepped outside of their comfort zone and that's just full facts. You don't ever progress in comfort. So your subconscious is always going to bring you back to that place of like safety, that place of, okay, this is familiar where I don't keep a commitment to myself. I'm familiar with that. So I'm going to bring you back there. You want to get out of that. You want to get out of that familiar familiarity with being comfortable. Step outside of that. And you do that with keeping those little tasks and those little promises that you keep to yourself. And that leads into that like forward motion of having more motivation to a point where you don't think about it. You don't think about, dang, I have to get to the gym. You're already there. And now you just do the workout and that's it. So, you no, know, and we're not perfect. We fall off sometimes, but the important thing and how you don't fall off is by being consistent in your routine. That's that, that's all it is. Being consistent in your routine and, that, in your routine, and that's why it's so important for us to have routines. It's very important. In a routine that is realistic to you, not what girlies are doing on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, a routine that is realistic to you. And if you wanna build off that routine, start small. If you are waking up at eight o'clock in the morning, but you wanna wake up at seven, and that gives you an extra hour to get more done, start small. Wake up at 7.50 the next day, then wake up at 7.40. You know what I'm saying? Like slowly, slowly get there, be realistic. Don't just go full throttle into it because when you do that, you kind of like set off all these alarms in your head where it's like, hell no, I ain't doing this no more. And then you don't, and you never reach what you're trying to reach. So be realistic with the goals that you set for yourself. Be, re be realistic with who you are. Be realistic with your routine and what would work for you and work from there. Don't base it off of what everyone else is doing. Comparison is the thief of joy. Do not compare yourself to what other people are doing. Don't compare it to me, your mama, your sister, anybody. Don't compare it. Just do you and I promise you, you'll figure out what works for you. You just got to be consistent and keep those promises and commitments to yourself. But that is all I have for this quick get ready with me. Like I said, I'm about to just head to Wegmans and later I'm taking this off and I'm going to the gym with my husband. I really enjoyed making this video. I know it's very different from my channel, but it's just something that I just really, I really want to do like more chit chats, more girl time, more like face to face, more story time, all that. Um, if you're into this, please, like the video, leave a comment. Let me know some more questions you want to hear in like the next chit chat or whatever. Um, I'll list all the products that I use down below if you're interested. And yeah, I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.